Hi everyone. In this video, we will go over the last module, which is module four. So, we, which is uh, about protecting data, which is security and privacy. So before we go over this one, so what we have done so far, or actually this is what we will be going over today is how computers work and the hardware and software. So, so far, we have actually learned a lot in this class and those skills that you have learned in so far in this class are actually you should include them in your resume so this class is a resume builder so you have learned how to use as sql so you would definitely need to write that in under the technical skills in your resume so sql erd and also you have learned about data manipulation and visualization uh, using Excel. So you will need to do that and put that and also talk about pivot tables when you are on an internship interview or a job interview or even a summer interview. Talk about your skills that you have learned in Excel, how to manipulate data and how to visualize data and also how to use pivot tables. And also you can talk about and include the VBA and the flow charting that you have been learning in this class. And those are really helpful skills you know, that can distinguish you from others, um, other applicants actually. So let me, uh, let's move on now today to the uh, uh, module four, which is about protecting. So we have finished automating um, data which was about programming the logic of programming flowcharts input output process and calculating buttons so uh, this is actually this concludes our or module three and today we will start with module four so this is what we will be learning about is protecting data and in order to be able to protect data, first you will need to understand how this data is stored and how it is manipulated. Uh, in, in other words, we need to understand what we mean by computer hardware and software in order to be able to uh, protect this data. So we will be learning about security threats and con controls and also we'll learn about personal privacy. So uh, in today's lecture, we will just go over the software hardware uh, or the computer hardware and software. And in a later lecture, we will talk about security and privacy. So I'll let you watch this video at your own time. But uh, one important concept that we have talked about is the input process output. So when we it comes to a computer system, the input devices, so we are talking about the input devices, the process devices, and the output devices. So the input devices basically include the keyboard, the, uh, you know, the mouse. Uh, it can include also the, um, let's say, the joystick if we are playing a video game or the touchpad on a laptop. So all of those are examples of input devices within our computer system. And then the processing devices, which include the storage devices, such as the hard drive, flash memory, and the chip, and so on. Those are examples of processing devices. As for the output devices in a computer system, we are talking about the printer, the screen, uh, and, and so on. So let's start by looking at the hardware components of a computer. So we'll go over the CPU or the central processing unit, RAM, random access memory, cache, secondary storage, um, and versus primary storage. And we will distinguish between those two guys. And then we will go over the motherboard, uh, graphics card, network interface, and system bus. So, you can think about a computer as an analogy of a restaurant. So you can think of a computer as a restaurant. So the restaurant has this setting area which is displaying, uh, which is kind of where the, the, the display is, is concentrated on, which you can think about it as our monitor, for example. 
and then we have the, the kitchen which has all the actions and is is where the food is processed and that's where the data is processed and and so on and then we have channels that connect the different components in in within the computer or within the restaurant and that channel actually that keeps moving orders for example and instructions from customers or clients to the kitchen or the chef this is what we call it the bus and also the system or the bus in a computer or in in the in a restaurant analogy we can call that person a waiter or a waitress So again, we have talked about the system bus and we say that, and this is how the bus looks like. It is kind of the channels or the communication channels within the motherboard that kind of help connect the different components with on the motherboard. So that's an analogy of a waiter that takes information or data from one component and moves it to another component within the computer. And then the, the bus has different speeds and there are also different uh, types of, of buses. Here we have the memory bus, which connects the North Bridge with the memory. And we have the front side bus. And this is actually the bus that we, when we ask about what is the bus speed of your computer, basically we are referring to the front side bus. And uh, this is actually connecting the CPU to the North Bridge. Um, and, and another bus that we, we you can see here is the AGP bus, which is connecting the the graphic into the north bridge, and also we have the PCI bus, which connects actually the PCI uh, peripherals, uh, and in this case, actually this includes like the Wi-Fi, it includes the graphic card, and and so on that the PCI connects to the south bridge. And then the ATA bus actually connects what we call them here, the disk drives into the south bridge. So when we talk about the, the speed bus or the speed of the bus, we are basically referring to, uh, it is measured in megahertz. And the higher the speed, the faster the, your computer will be. So the typical speed of a bus is 100 megahertz. And so let's see how we can figure out uh, if you want to know your your bus speed. And we will do that in a little bit. <clears throat> so CPU, you can think about the CPU as the brain of the computer or the chef. And actually the chef in a restaurant is the brain of that restaurant. So if you have a good chef, then you will have good business. The same thing in a, in a person. The brain, if you have clean and, and very smart brain, then you will actually succeed in everything you do. The same thing for the computer. If you have a CPU that is fast and efficient and effective, then your computer will be very efficient and effective. So um, CPU, which executes actually the instructions um, and that are, are used within the, within the computer on the motherboard. And the same thing we can think about the chef is the one who manipulates all the action in the restaurant. So the CPU speed <coughs> is measured in gigahertz, as I mentioned earlier, and a typical value for a laptop goes from 2.3 gigahertz to 2.9 gigahertz. So if you have a PC uh, or a desktop, it, you might have actually much better speed than this. So again, the most recent or the most uh, popular one or, or, or CPU that we use is the Intel Core i7. And this is kind of the, in comparison to Intel Core i5 and Intel Core i3, uh, Intel Core's i7 is, is best. And then comes, the i5 comes next. But i3 is, is an old technology you can say so if you get the chance to buy a computer I will definitely go for i7 and so on and again we talked about the motherboard as the kitchen so in the motherboard we have the different components for example the stove we have the oven we have uh, the utensils uh, and so on 
The same thing also on the motherboard, we have all those actions. We have the processor, the CPU, and also we have all the peripherals, and we have the hard drive, and, and the memory, and so on. So when we talk about network interface, so network interf interface, there are the wired uh, network interface versus the wireless network interface. So the wired network interface is what we call it the ethernet. So it is the cable that we use to connect our computers to, a net, to a, an internet outlet or to let's say a router. So that's how you see it here. On the other hand, most of our computers nowadays, we have embedded uh, Wi-Fi. So uh, most of us actually use Wi-Fi, so we don't need to necessarily to connect with a wire into the internet through the ethernet. Uh, so the, the latest technology or standards for Wi-Fi is the 802.11 AC. And this is the latest technology or standards for Wi-Fi, which is actually three times faster than the previous technology or standard, which was the N uh, standard. So in a restaurant, what would you uh, consider, or you know, since we talked about analogy, so what would the network interface represent in a restaurant? So in this case, actually it is a delivery or a pickup and also for cash cash actually when we talk about mm, storage so we are talking about primary storage versus secondary storage so the second the primary storage is the temporary storage so cash and and ram are actually examples of uh, temporary storage for instructions so for example in a kitchen we will put the spices in, are in a handy place for the, the chef so that he or she can get those spices really quick and pour them into the food and put them back right away. So this is what we call it the temporary or um, really fast fetch. So you can fetch this data, fetch this this information or instructor, instructions really quick and then put them back. On the other hand, if you are talking about prior, uh, the secondary storage, which in which you will need to grab or fetch this data from a stair, from a warehouse. So you will go to the storage room and get that uh, ingredients, or in that case, in our case, our computer will be from the hardware or from the hard disk. On the other hand, if you are using the cache, for example, if I'm using, let's say a Word document or any software that as soon as I open it, then the instructions are saved in cache and also in a RAM where they can be fetched. These instructions can be fetched really quick and uh, the computer will not slow down. So it will not take time for this data to get retrieved. So, um, cache can be very small uh, approximately four megabytes or and for storing frequently used instructions on the cpu so cache size actually can be found or can be found through this code that i have provided to you on the top left corner and so let's do that and see what will be my uh, speed or the speed of my my bus let's see so what i will do is i'll just copy this code here and then i will go to cmd and then Control v to copy that and then you will notice that i have the l2 and the l3 so my l3 here is actually a uh, is four megabyte on the other hand that my l2 is half megabyte so the larger the the bus or the, the 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 value for the bus speed the faster your computer will be so you get the idea now how to answer this question for your homework or for a quiz so another primary storage is actually what we call it the random access memory or ram 
So the first thing that when we are working on a program, the first thing that the computer looks for data or instructions goes to the cache. And then if they are not in the cache, it goes to the memory. And then if they are not in the memory, then goes to the, the, the secondary storage, which is the hard drives. So random access memory or RAM stores things that are currently being used in a recipe. So you can think of the RAM as a refrigerator. So if the power is cut from a refrigerator, then the food will be spoiled, will go bad. The same thing for any data that are stored in a RAM and the power from your computer goes, goes off, uh, then actually that data will be lost. So this is kind of why or the difference between a RAM versus uh, the prime or secondary storage such as a hard drive. So now RAM sizes actually they are measured in uh, gigabytes and the most common ones nowadays are the DDR which is the dual data rate memory and the minimum uh, I would accept personally as 8 gigabyte minimum RAM. Uh, so for you, you might have deals with computers that have maybe four gigabyte uh, RAM, or I would not go less than four, or actually I would not go less than eight. But if you have two, you have two, four might do it if, if it is upgradable. So you can actually install your own uh, upgradable RAM later on. So you can think about the secondary storage as a warehouse so things that where we store items that are not perishable so uh, the most common ones or, or secondary storage is what we call it the disk drive uh, or the hard drive so the this one uh, the hard drives there are different types of hard drives so we have the optical one so for looking from left to the right so the spinning disk which is the optical hard drive actually where we have the pin and then you have the disk is spinning and actually it is read through that pin and as you can see that there is friction that pin and uh, has frictions with the, the disk when it is moving and rotating so it creates heat and that's why in some of those old computers or those computers that use optical spinning hard drive you will hear some noise so or the fan actually is going on to keep that heat down on the other hand if you have more advanced computers that have solid state drive and the solid state drive you can think about it as as the jump drive that you have so the jump drive is very, actually solid hard drive so it doesn't have that spinning uh, needle in it and that's why you if you are using or if you have a computer that have solid state drive you might not hear much noise and it is actually ma much much faster than the optical one and i personally changed my uh, hard drive from an optical one to a solid state drive and i noticed a big difference uh, my computer my old computer used to take almost five to ten minutes to start at some point because it was getting old but and then when I, I installed the solid state it takes actually less than one minute actually a few seconds for it to start uh, when I use the solid state drive and so on so uh, solid state drive they are more expensive uh, than the hard drive and the hard drive are really cheap and you can get really large storage up to tera maybe more than terabyte for very very cheap um, little amount of money on the other hand solid state it is it is a bit expensive but it is worth it so here is what we can see kind of the most common or the standard nowadays one terabyte or 1.5 terabyte of a hard drive if it is an optical one for a computer if you buy if you are trying to buy a computer and 256 gigabyte or 512 gigabyte for a solid state so i would not go less than these standards actually uh, and again if you want to know whether your computer has um, solid state or optical hard drives let's do it this way so let's look at this one so 
to do that to figure out what you have so I'll just open a file and then let's say that I want to go to my so this PC so my hard drive is here I called it the C drive I'll right click on it go to properties and then in the properties you will see here how much hard drive I have in the C drive and again for me I have a Mac and a boot cam in a Mac so I divided or partitioned my hard drive into two uh, operating system so one is with the boot cam which is approximately 400 and 100 is for the Mac operating system so in general or you can say in total I have 500 gigabyte but the ones that is free space is 79 so far I have been using a lot of storage in this drive and again you might notice that it is I have only 5 gigabyte um, which is very little but let's look at the hard drive here so here it will tell me exactly what type of hard drive I have so you can see SSD this is the solid state drive so I am I have solid state drive the same thing you can find out what you have by doing the same step so another thing that you might uh, we might not talk about it later but let me just talk about it here since we are already here uh, so this PC so if you need to know more information about let's say your operating system and so on you can actually go to this PC right click on it and properties and then you will see what your processor is so in my case my processor is i7 CPU and that's uh, the gigahertz that I have and the memory or the RAM that is installed in my computer is 16 gigabyte so this is really uh, uh, helpful as you can see here uh, I have 16 gigabyte and they recommended at least 8 gigabyte and in some cases you might get the, the opportunity to choose what system type you want for your processor whether you want it to be 64 bit operating system or or 32 bit operating system so I'll definitely go with the 32 bit operating system so you get the idea so let me close out of here go back here so another thing that uh, is going to be very helpful for you is to install this this one so this software you can uh, it's called CPU ID so for your homework you will be asked to provide some information and one of your uh, the information that you will need to provide will be about your cache or let's say the bus speed so the bus speed in this case is here you will need to install this software or you can just look it up it is CPU ID CPU Z uh, so it is free uh, to install and then you will actually find a lot of information about your computer here so for example my processor is core i7 um, Intel and and you will find more information that you can report for example here and level uh, level 3 so remember when we talked about when we went to the CMD or the black screen we found that level 3 for cache speed was 4 megabytes so it is also provided for us here and they have two cores and four threads so this is uh, this will be very helpful for you when you are doing the homework all right so it goes out of here so when we think about how computers think so again the brain of the computer is you say this is the CPU and the computer understands only zeros and ones or binary data which is on and off or true or false or yes or no and so on so understands only binary data which is ones and zeros so in order to store data yeah, and the, the size of the data goes up from let's say plain letters and characters all the way and then going up a, a little bit with images and then vo uh, or audio and then the highest storage need will go for 
videos so videos consume a lot of storage and as you can see here we have a breakdown of storage sizes and what they are called so the highest so far or actually it might be there is zeta byte as well that it's not included here but you got the idea here what we mean so you can think about one or you can think about any character or a number that you type in a word document as eight bits so the letter a or the or the number one or or the exclamation mark any character you type in a word document that's by itself is eight bits or one byte and then you can measure or judge on the uh, based on that so i will let you first read this take a moment and read this sentence for between you and yourself or read it loud and tell me what you think it it should read like well, uh, a lot of you will might read it that in a, in a way that there are only 10 types, but that's not actually correct. So the way we read this one is we say that there are only two types of people in the world, those who understand binary and those who don't. So this is an inside joke because uh, the decimal, if you notice here, the decimal number two, it is actually a binary of one zero. So one zero or 10 is actually uh, equivalent to the number two in a decimal numbers. So now when we talk about software, there are two types of software. We have the system software and we have the application software. So those software are, are actually, they have instructions that help us do what, what tasks that we want to do so basically they provide instructions to the computer to perform tasks for us so there are system software and application software so let's start by looking at the system software you can think about the system software as those as those software that we as end users don't interact directly with and that includes examples such as operating systems. So operating systems such as Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, and uh, let's say uh, Android or OS X El Capitan or Android and so on, or Linux, Unix, all of those operating systems, <clears throat> they are examples of a system software. And then the other type of software is called the application software or program software. So those are the applications or the software that we as end users interact with directly. So this includes productivity software such as Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Access, Outlook, and so on. And then examples also as games that you play, those are software or application software, program software that we as end user interact with directly. Internet browser, for example, email, and, and even the software or the VBA application that you, you, will, you, you will create in this class so the end user interacts with the hardware through intermediation or through the application and operating systems so how does the internet work so the internet actually it works through an approach we call it the client server approach so the the client basically refers to any device that we use to access internet so that device can be a laptop, it can be a PC, it can be an, uh, an iPhone, an iPad, it can be any uh, tablet, it can be any device that we use to access, to, the, to access the internet. So then when we go and open a browser, for example, and put, let's say, the URL for whatever, uh, let's say, google.com. So we put that URL there and hit enter. So then the browser or the, the client sends a request through, the, through the, the modem or the router through the internet to a server. And that server actually has actual files stored in their hard drive. And those files, basically all the web pages that we are using, actually they are uh, 
pages that are or files that are stored in those servers so we send that request and then the server acknowledges or accepts those requests and those servers actually they are different types of servers including database server proxy server web server application server ftp server or mail server and just to give you examples of servers so when we, the, the the server receives that request it sends the the reply or the response to that request uh, or accepts that response that request with a response and then we get that web page that we requested in the url or in the browser and we get that through the router and the router actually connects all those computers to the internet with through what we call it the the, the backbone so the internet infrastructure that is within the United States or worldwide. So the client, so how do we interact with uh, the internet? So the client interacts with the server through the router. And at what intersection do they begin to differ? Actually, they begin to differ at the application and the operating system. So types of operating systems. So again, we have talked about the types of operating systems. So the Mac operating system, uh, such as the OIS or iOS. And then we have the Windows 10, Windows 7, and the Android. And then we have the server operating, uh, server operating systems, um, include the Exchange server, um, and Linux, Unix, and Windows server, and so on. And then the router, which is the Cisco iOS software. So what other differences are there between the client and router and server? So the client is the only component that has interface or has a screen. And as for router and server, they don't have um, a screen because actually they don't need it. We don't need, they don't need to display information. So for your homework, um, actually, I, I, require, I asked you to look at your computer spec, specs, and you can do that by going to, for example, look up your, the brand of your computer and the name of your computer online, and you can find that information from your, uh, let's say, the, 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 the manufacturer of your computer, and also through the steps that I showed you earlier in this, in this lecture. So good luck to you, and... Uh, uh, we'll uh, talk to you soon.